thank you so much. It's just overwhelming to see the support of all these people that we've known, many of whom we've known for so many years. Uh, so welcome to our very final exhibition, which is very much bittersweet. Um, when we sold the building, I had a moment and was very upset that that was this chapter closing. But then about a week or so later, I had another moment when I remembered the four of us standing in front of the flour mill, which we were so excited to buy, with huge passion and fire to want to create an amazing gallery. So when I thought about that, I thought, well, it's very sad to end this part of our journey, but hey, isn't it wonderful we can finish on such a high note, having achieved all those dreams from so long ago. So that's... And joining us tonight in our exhibition are four incredible artists who are very dear to all of us. Um, and I'd just like to briefly say a few words about each. Um, first, Sean. Sean has been with us doing our very first project, the Silhouettes Project, years and years ago. And... Uh, he is one special artist and it's really fantastic to have some of his work on display tonight. Sean's work always invokes a higher power for me, the majesty of our local environment, celebrated but with many stories to tell within. Thanks, Sean, for all the effort to be part of this exhibition. It means so much. Larry Mitchell, thank you so much, Larry, for all the projects you've done, for being part of our mad ideas and supporting us all the way. But it's been an honour to promote you as an artist, as it has all of you. Um, but I'm really excited by your limestone coast. Ever since the Kimberley days, I've thought you excel at rocks like no other. And uh, it's something about the texture and the form and each tiny detail. I'm a rock person, so I really am very honoured that Larry's given us this amazing work. And, hey, who can make scrub look fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> um, Helen Norton can't be with us tonight, but I've always admired Helen for pointing out the crazy side of life and giving me an, ad an adventure to enjoy. Um, and she always has so much to say. I love the stories, listening to clients in the gallery, talking about what's going on in Helen's painting. It, they give forever. Every time you look at it, there's a little other quirky side to it. So I'm really sorry, but can we all give Helen a huge <laughs> round of applause? Because she's dearly missed tonight. Only in person, her work is here for us all to enjoy. And then Ingrid Windrum, another absolutely amazing artist who delights in the Kimberley and the southwest now of more recent days. Helen just nails that perfect moment where you have to stand in front of a landscape and go, oh my God. That is perfection. And that's what I've also noticed in the gallery is they make people stop in their tracks and they stand there and enjoy. And that's a real gift that Ingrid gives to everybody. So if you can and in every way you can, please continue to support artists. And there's only one person... I'm going to be in trouble now. But I'd like to thank one more person, my gorgeous husband, David. <laughs> But so often Dave comes home, I just haven't got it perfect. And he comes home later and later because he's there trying to get that perfect finish to do justice to the natural piece of timber that is in front of him. And Dave, you're to be commended for your tenacity, mate, and for putting up with me as well. Just need one more painting. So thank you, my darling. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Uh, perhaps a little background history to start with. Wendy and I first became aware of Jarrock in the mid-90s when we were 
attending a jazz festival up in, in York. Um, we saw a sign outside the old flour mill there, so we thought we'd go in and have a look. I can't remember too much from that visit, it was quite a long time ago. Uh, only that the furniture on display and the restoration of the flour mill looked pretty damn impressive. Sometime after that, while at home base in Wembley, we were struck by one of the displays there. A small cafe table and chair set made of jarrah with a granite insert in the top, an iron frame underneath and little wooden things on the bottom of the legs, the feet. And I had had a passive interest in woodwork since my teenage years when I made a pretty rough and rudimentary study table, but had done no woodwork in the intervening 30 odd years. However, seeing the Jarrock cafe table and chair set dramatically rekindled my interest in woodwork. By the next morning, I was on fire with enthusiasm <laughs> to see if I could attempt to make something similar. So notwithstanding all these challenges, after more equipment purchases, including a router and an Arbitec carving tool, I did complete the task, including four chairs to match the Jarrock design. After Jarrock relocated the business to Margaret River, Gary was delivering a piece of furniture to our bush house down here. As he came through the front door, he noticed the, the table <laughs> and chair set. He looked at it briefly, somewhat inquiringly, I thought, and commented, that must have been one of our very early pieces. <laughs> We have always been fascinated with Jarrock lifestyle furniture, for that's really what it is. What Gary and David have done with this company, with the enduring support of Lara and Joe, and a small workshop team, is nothing short of absolutely remarkable. We did a count recently on the number of pieces of Jarrock furniture we have in Perth and down here. And it came to 21, which kind of surprised us, actually. 13 pieces in Perth and eight down here. I guess you could say we're really hooked on Jarrock furniture. And, and what is in this gallery? Um, from such humble beginnings in the backyard shed in Scarborough to another shed in Osmond Park to, to the old flour mill up in York, and finally to Margaret River, the last 36 years have clearly been an incredible journey for Jarrock, which reflects a very strong sense of creative purpose, a willingness to take on substantial risks, incredible perseverance, a belief in oneself, and a down-to-earth approach that is welcoming to everybody. These are truly admirable qualities, without which the 50 design awards that Jarrock has received over the years would simply not have been possible. If collaboration is the new innovation, then Jarrock is certainly a fine example of this. What Jarrock has developed in the Southwest is now a fundamental part of the character of this region. This, is, this capability is valuable and must be preserved into the future. Let's drink a toast to the Jarrock team, every single one of them, for their impressive contribution to our individual lifestyles. Wendy and I, and no doubt all of us, wish you all every success with whatever the future holds for you. I love that Bill started by copying our work and then Thank God he started buying some. <laughs> but actually, when I did see that table, I thought, gee, we, did we make that? You know, like, he, he did a pretty good job of copying it on his kitchen table. But no, we, I, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go on too long because, you know, what do you say? There's too much to say. But <clears throat> I do want to thank 
uh, a few, lots of people. I guess I'll start with our customers. It's been a, in the journey. One of the special parts of the business is the are the people you meet and uh, the people you do business with, and our customers have become our friends. But so a huge thank you to everybody that supported us over the years. And we are saying this is an end of a chapter, and it's, it's not actually the end. I'll make sure of that. Um, we do have a few ideas up our sleeve for what might happen next, but uh, it's certainly the end of our retail chapter. And it's been an incredible journey, you know, from Scarborough Beach Road to, to York to here. And of course, the artists have, been, have become such good friends as well, uh, so many of them, and a huge part of our journey, as have our customers been, you know. It's all intertwined, this business. So family, they're all here tonight, well, most of them, and my little grandson's, what's he, kicking around. There he is, the next generation. So none of the ones from this generation want this business, but he might. <laughs> um, I want to thank all the staff that have worked for us over the years. Absolutely fabulous. Um, and there's been a lot of them. We weren't, I mean, I was never a good business manager at managing people. Dave was actually very good at it. He's a bit more patient than me. But, um, yeah, our, our business in York grew very quite large for us for a little um, couple of wood ducks. And managing people was a difficult thing. So down here, we've sort of kept it small and tight. We've got a, we've a great tradesman that works with us, Jagger, and, of course, Luca Burke, who did his apprenticeship with us. But the staff are incredible, and, they, again, they feel like family. Um, I want to thank the building. Sean Atkinson over here and Peter Godden, I think, is here tonight. They kind of started, and, again, we can't claim to start, have started this, this legacy that started in this building. A group of artists got together and decided they were going to make a gallery out of this place. And the, at that stage, it was the rear building and the front building. And this was a, a lovely garden. Um, and one of the things that used to drive me mad is people would get to this back door and they'd say, oh, this is great. What's in that building up there? And I'd say, well, it's 20 yards away. Why don't you walk up and have a look? It's got beautiful art and furniture. Oh, we'll have a look next time. So much to the chagrin probably of my sister and all the garden lovers, the garden had to go and we built this pavilion. And what this pavilion did was give us the opportunity to show work on a much larger scale. And I think that's when we piqued Larry's interest and particularly Sean's because we just had space. We had natural light coming in through the top and it's just been a, a fantastic place. And um, one of the beautiful things about what we're doing at the moment is that it, it all kind of happened, a chain of events, and we ended up selling the building uh, which, you know, we're happy about. Uh, the guy who bought the building is a gallery operator. So the town isn't going to lose a gallery. It might lose us, but, you know, um, it's the oldest existing building in the main street, built in 1925. So that's that 98 years old and, and going strong, I must say. Thanks, building. <laughs> Sorry to go on about that. <clears throat> and... Yeah, I won't go on anything else or I might bust out again, but obviously these three people here, the girls particularly, I mean, honestly, I would have loved this to go on forever. When everyone says, oh, everything must come to an end and yeah. But for me, I've had the best job because I just go, get to work in my studio, make beautiful things, come in here, plonk them on the floor, tell all the girls what they need to do with them and walk out again. And Dave... <laughs> In a similar way is, is the maker and we, we make these beautiful things. But on and to front. And the, the way they've curated this building and the way they've presented the art and the furniture is, you know, it's special. But the fact that people can imagine these things in their home and, and that's what Joe and Lara do, you know, they hang the paintings, they place the glass and they curate it beautifully. So thanks, girls. <laughs> Very special people. And... I think that's got to be it. Anyone else want to say anything? Oh, oh Larry. Good on you, mate. No worries, you can be less emotional. Than that. Um, just to, on behalf of the artists that have been involved with these guys over the years, my paintings always look better in Jarrock than they actually are. And I think that's about all I really need to say about that relationship. But um, we've had some wonderful adventures over the years, done some projects together done some travelling together, had more fun than, you know, is, is probably than we should have at times. And um, I really want to thank the guys for that. I've been amazed by your and, – and enjoyed your friendship so much. Um, I wish we'd spent more time together. We were always going to do that one last project. We never quite got to it because we couldn't make our mind up, you know, which one we were going to do. 
So thanks, guys, for contributing so much to my life and to all the artists that have, you've been involved with. You're, you're 50% of the art world is people that appreciate art and know what to do with it. And I really thank you so much. Bye. Me and this crazy bugger <laughs> flew to LA. I had granite tables and he had these huge burls and we landed at LAX. And Hughes, is Hughes out here? Don't think so. Hughes, I met us at the airport in his woody, one of those cars yeah. with the wooden panels down the side. Land yacht. And we camped in his in Hughes's mother's garage in Santa Monica, yeah. and then we proceeded to try and hock our wares around Hollywood. We actually stood on Rodeo Drive, yeah. waving our trying to you know I think we reckon we saw Rod Stewart or <laughs> but we were trying to just flog it anyway. It was a crazy trip, but we ended up getting into one of the best design houses in LA at the time, so yes. it was amazing and, yeah. and it's great to see you again, mate. Thank you. Yeah, well, that was in 1987 and um, one of the things I wanted to just say about Gary uh, okay. was his, his determination and his inspiration. So um, we're in, in Los Angeles and we met this guy called James Goodwin who picked us up in an XK, XJ6 Jaguar and drove us to his office and... Um, he gave us the go-ahead that we could um, promote our products in a company called Uniquely Australian in West Hollywood. And the thing I remember about Gary, we used to call him the air puncher because he was so impressed, he was so happy, he was so wrapped. He'd come out of that meeting punching the air like this, just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we called him Guardio Bonetti, the air puncher. Good on you, Pete. I'm glad that's the only story you told. Uh, I'll enjoy the food, have some wine. There's a few beers there. And thank you once again for all coming. Good night.